I, I, I throw this in more if you're curious about the carbon cycle and why we think nature-based solutions are important. It's far too small to read on the, on, the, on the slide here. But if you're curious about the volume of carbon that sits in natural systems, if you just look at carbon rather than carbon dioxide, fossil fuels emit about 8 uh, billion tons of, of carbon a year. So that you trans multiply that by about 4 to get carbon dioxide. And that's the scale of the impact. Vegetation on the planet stores 450 to 600 billion tons of carbon. Uh, ocean floor sediments store 1,750 billion tons of carbon. And so why do we focus on nature-based solutions? We focus on them because small changes to the way that natural systems are managed can have an effect size that in many ways could be as large as all human emissions on the planet. And when we talk about nature-based solutions specifically, as a sector, we talk about what's called avoided deforestation projects. And the crude and crass simple way of explaining that is, I'm going to pay someone to not cut down a tree. Uh, the slightly more sophisticated version says, the opportunity cost uh, of cutting down the tree versus preserving it for carbon purposes uh, can always be compensated by carbon markets. Typical NPV for converting for tropical forest to pasture land or to soybeans or to, to palm oil is a fraction, uh, 10 to 20 percent of the value of that land if you preserve it and fund it through, through carbon investments, carbon markets. So it's a better NPV to pay someone to not cut down the tree than it is if they liquidate those assets and leave what's typically denuded or desertified soils within those regions. So that's the simple contract structure is if you can enforce that contract, as we did in, in the Congo in 2012, we protected 300,000 hectares of land by initially investing about $2 million, and that's then produced 3 million tonnes of credits a year, which have sold for $10 a tonne, and if you do the math, you get a sense of the scale at which local compensation for, the, for giving up the right to cut down those trees can more than compensate for, for forest loss. There's a lot of work looking at reforestation projects now. There's huge areas of land uh, in places like Sierra Leone, where I've done a lot of work in the last few years, they were cut down for palm oil plantations or coconut plantations, were left degraded, they don't naturally regenerate. So there's a massive effort now to plant hundreds of thousands of either plantation species or native species, because the soil productivity and the, the precipitation mean that these trees can grow you know, several meters a year under the right kind of conditions. Blue carbon projects are very much a new area and they refer to uh, marine-based uh, investments. That could be anywhere from kelp bed restoration to the sort of current hot topic, which is mangrove restoration. So we spend a lot of time looking at how you rebuild, restore, and protect mangroves. A mangrove can store up to a 1,000 tons of CO2 equivalent per hectare in the soils and can sequester 10 to 15 tons per hectare. They're incredibly productive ecosystems um, that have been degraded for a, a whole range of different reasons, from high up firewood to hotel developments. But by investing in them, you can create this enormous, it's in a sense, a kind of carbon vacuum that pulls carbon dioxide out of the, the atmosphere and prevents methane releases. And then lots of very interesting large-scale regenerative agriculture projects in the moment where that soil carbon sequestration can be, uh, can be enhanced. Mm -hmm.